Lena Horne, a towering figure of American culture. As a singer, a stage actress, a classic beauty, and a movie star, she has reached the pinnacle of success. Her extraordinary 60-year career is a story of triumph over adversity, and it has been played out brilliantly in song. Talented, spirited, and beautiful, 16-year-old Lena landed her first job as a chorus girl at Harlem's famous Cotton Club. There she met such musical greats as Cab Calloway and Duke Ellington. Calamar, Calamar, Swanee Shaw, let me make this job once more, boy. In 1940, Lena was hired as a vocalist with Charlie Barnett's orchestra, becoming one of the first black performers to sing with a major white band. On the road, she endured the same racism that Billie Holiday did, but she quickly joined the ranks of America's leading songstresses. In 1942, Lena left New York for Hollywood. Brazilian boogie. For Lena, the movies were a natural next step. However, a black actress had limited opportunities at that time. Then, Lena received a big break. MGM loaned her to 20th Century Fox for stormy weather. And go, everything ahead is gone. Stormy weather. Featuring the song that would forever be linked with her career. But the discrimination worsened after her marriage to Lenny Hayton, her musical mentor at MGM, who was white. Despite the difficulties they encountered, their marriage flourished for 24 years until Hayton's death in 1971. Lena's star continued to rise through the 50s and 60s. She drew record crowds at clubs in America and abroad and starred in the Broadway musical Jamaica. By then, the civil rights movement was in full swing. Lena, influenced by her grandmother, Billie Holiday, Paul Robeson, and her own experiences, became a visible and vocal supporter. In 1981, Lena returned to Broadway. Her show, Lena Horne, The Lady and Her Music, became a critical and commercial sensation. The show received a Tony Award. The album, recorded with producer Quincy Jones, won two Grammy Awards, and the show became the longest-running one-person performance in the history of the New York stage. Last spring, Lena returned to the stage, this time at Lincoln Center. She headlined a tribute to the late pianist and composer Billy Strayhorn, who had been a dear and close friend. The New York Times called Lena's tribute to her soulmate the stuff of legend, and the legendary Lena Horne urged on by her close personal friend and associate Shirley Cowell, finally agreed to return to the recording studio. Your kiss, your smile. Lena's triumphant new album for Blue Note Records, We'll Be Together Again, expresses intimate messages to those Lena has loved. Through the decades, Lena Horne has triumphed over discrimination. She has enabled us to look beyond her dazzling beauty to appreciate the remarkable woman inside. Lena Horn has forever changed the way we see our world and the way we hear a song. I think the great test of music is uh, the intensity of your belief in what they're playing. If they're, if they're doing pop or rock or whatever they're doing, as long as the musicians sound like they believe in it and they're playing it uh, as best they can and they have a performer that believes in it too, it'll never die, never go away. And also, in my era, we had the advantage of having the great, great writers, the Gershwin, 
Cosby, uh, uh, Johnny, Johnny Burke and Jimmy Van Hughes and uh, Irving Berlin, uh, uh, all those great men. And of course, what they said was interesting. What they said was brilliant. And the Beatles had the most exquisite taste in chording and their music construction of any young group that I can remember. Because when they came in, I said, what am I going to do? I can't sing that kind of music. And right away I learned to sing some of their songs and did them and loved them, you know. Uh, they had great taste. As long as there's taste there, I think the music lives. Last summer, George Wine told me that he was doing a concert as a salute to Billy Strayhorn. And Billy and I are very close friends, and he, I miss him terribly. He's dead, but uh, he hasn't left me. And uh, when, he, when George told me this, I said, well, I haven't sung in ages, but for Billy, I will come and do the concert. And uh, I loved it because I sang his songs, Stay On Songs. In 1942, Duke Ellington had a show uh, in Los Angeles called Jump For Joy. He asked me to come and he left a ticket at the box office and I went to see Jump For Joy, which was wonderful, by the way. At the end of the first act, I heard a voice in Miss Horn, and I looked up and I saw this beautiful little, little brown man. And he said, uh, I'm Billy Strayhorn. Uh, I worked with Mr. Ellington. I liked him right away, you know. Uh, I can't tell you why, but I was right to like him because I grew to love him completely. And we became soulmates. Uh, he was a brilliant musician and a writer, and he wrote many of the things that uh, Duke Ellington used. I mean, he wrote A Train and Chelsea Bridge and uh, 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 many of the mood pieces in the perfume suite. Someone once told a, a friend of mine, uh, Billy played maybe for me at his house. And he said, I didn't sing much about the song. He said, but when I went to hear Lena sing it, I loved it, he said, because I listened to, I really, he says, I, ha I know your secret, Billy. You write for her. When you write a song, you, you have it about, he says, well, I know the way she thinks and feels, and it's the kind of in your face number, you know. Maybe. On the other hand, maybe not. <laughs> the title song, We'll Be Together Again, well, I've always liked that song, but you see, I really think I'm going to be with Billy again, and, and Audrey, and, and uh, my other friend. And uh, so that's why I sang that song, because uh, no matter what, I intend to join them wherever they are, up or down. I lost a couple of people. And a couple of the songs that I sing are, are about them and to them. And it's about loss of them and my love for them. And uh, most of the songs on the record were chosen because it was the people I loved early on in my life and then the ones that left me and I missed them and wanted them back and the ones that left me for good. And I. Each song uh, was about their memories and mine together. A lot of good times, a lot of bad times. I've never been able to describe my sound, and the, and the beautiful thing about it is that this record company was so nice to to have me uh, become one of their, well, one of their uh, stable. <laughs> I, I was surprised. I said to them, where, where are you going to put me, uh, uh, old lady, uh, old lady uh, musings? Or uh, what category am I going to be in? But they laughed and they said, well, we just want you anyway. And I'm very flattered and I, I love it.